We've said church growth isn't easy in a changing world, but we've also said God is already at work in our communities, opening up opportunities, stirring up questions. It's about looking for hidden leopards. Now we come to a crunch question. How do people find faith today? If you go back a generation, lots of people knew the answer to that question. People come to faith at big evangelistic events. They get taken by a friend to a Christian event. They get up out of their seat and take a literal step of faith. The template for these events was popularized by Billy Graham. Billy Graham was a high profile American evangelist. From the 1950s to the 1980s, he ran high profile rallies in the UK, including a famous one at Haringey in 1954. Lots of people came to faith, including many who went on to become leaders in the Church of England. So why not do that again today? Trouble is, the world has changed. Almost nobody does big rallies any longer, including the Billy Graham Association. They just don't seem to connect these days. Billy Graham mostly called people back to a faith they already knew something about from childhood. Most people now don't have that background. And those rallies worked on a come to us model. If we do something that looks and feels like church but do it really well, people will come. But today, why would they? Actually, there's another problem with looking to big events for our church growth. It's not only that people don't go to events like that any longer, there's evidence that their long-term effectiveness wasn't that great anyway. Here are the stats for an average Billy Graham rally in the UK. 35 nights in a big venue. 1.5 million people in attendance. 150,000 people make a faith commitment. Research shows 13% of those remain in church longer term. Now that's not bad, it clearly made a difference. But if you crunch the numbers, the time it would take for the whole UK to come to faith on that model is 3,500 years. And that's assuming most people are interested. Here's a very different model for church growth by way of contrast. Let's say there are three million practicing Christians in the UK of all traditions. Every five years, each of those Christians helps one friend find faith. Every five years, each of those friends helps one person find faith. The number of years it would take for the whole UK to find faith, 25. I know, it makes lots of assumptions, including the assumption that most people are even open to faith. But think about the maths apart from anything else. A far more effective approach to church growth is through one-to-one -one relationships. Not high-profile events, but low-key relationships. Events have their place, but what makes the difference is relationships and people sharing their faith with friends. If you want to know how significant church growth happens, that's your answer. Lots of ordinary people talking to their friends about something that's made a difference in their lives, praying for them and inviting them to find out more. So we come back to our big question. How do people find faith today? Well, one thing we mustn't lose sight of. Most people come to faith as children or as young adults. About three quarters of practicing Christians say they found faith by the age of 18. That's important and it underlines the importance of the home and toddler groups, children and youth groups, as well as school links. And we'll come back to all of those. But what about adults finding faith? All the evidence and all the recent writing on church growth points in the same direction. The normal route to faith for adults today is a journey. It's gradual. It normally takes a good five years or so, often longer. It's often messy with twists and turns. The journey's influenced by a whole lot of factors, but one thing that's key is personal relationships. The person knows and trusts somebody who has a faith, and that means they want to find out more. Probably the clearest place you'll see this set out is in a great book called Pathway to Jesus. It's by two student workers who ask a question. Do young adults still come to faith these days in our complex post-Christian times? The answer was yes, they do. So they looked at the faith journey of 2,000 young adults 
and found all the stories had a similar shape. The journey was gradual, over several years, and they all went through similar stages, getting to know and then trust a Christian, and gradually opening up to the possibility of change and eventually finding faith. This trust is absolutely vital. So why is building trust with a Christian so important? Well, to be blunt, the church has an image problem. And to help us see why, have a look in your handbook. You'll see two questions about which professions people trust and which professions they don't trust. Back in 2019, the pollsters Ipsos Mori listed a whole lot of professions and they asked people which professions they were most likely to trust and which they were least likely to trust. Have a think. What do you think were the two most trusted professions and the two least trusted? Quickly write down your guesses in your handbook. Most trusted? One and two? And which are the least trusted? One and two. How are you doing? Have you written four professions down? I'll tell you the answer. The most trusted profession was nurses, closely followed by doctors. And the least trusted? Politicians, closely followed by advertisers. We might smile, but it tells us something about our culture. People trust professions who care for the body and make a practical difference. They mistrust word-based professions, people who use words to persuade, because words can be used to deceive. So, if people just hear fine words preached, what they think is, how are you trying to trick me? How are you trying to take advantage of me? But if people see somebody caring in practical ways, they're more likely to trust them. This is such a key insight. To build trust, we don't rely on words only or on preaching. It's about caring, helping and making a difference. Trust is earned. And that's why our social action projects are so important, as well as our personal relationships. We'll say more about this in a bit. There's another reason why church has an image problem. The main thing lots of people associate church with is being judged morally. Lots of people imagine uptight, super moral people who like nothing better than to condemn others. Sadly, some churches can be like that. A visitor comes to church feeling nervous and the first thing that happens is somebody tells them that they're in the wrong pew or frowns at their toddler for making a noise. But even if they haven't experienced it, it's what so many people already expect from us. Church is a place that you'll be judged and found wanting. Church is a place of fear. The first letter of John says, there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. That's the antidote. That's the solution. That's why it's so important our churches have a culture of invitation, a culture of love and welcome. Smiling at visitors and making them feel at home makes a real difference. And that's why it's important our churches are involved in community activities that build trust. We can't just assume people will trust us, quite the opposite. We have to show we care for people. These issues of trusting Christians and feeling loved are so foundational and they completely shape our Stepping Stones model for growing a local church or faith community. Our Stepping Stones model builds on the work that's already happening in our churches with mission action planning. It takes it the next step. The Stepping Stones model centres on two key words. It's a search and it's a journey. And you'll see we summarise these two points in your handbook. One, a search for hidden leopards. Focus on outsiders. Look and pray to see where God's already at work. Two, a journey. Coming to faith takes time. Journey with people and earn trust and be intentional about making the most of our existing contacts to build love and trust. Putting in place stepping stones to help people progress. Including regular milestones, opportunities to find faith, go deeper in faith and apply faith. So that's the model we're going to unpack for you. Now, we know you're a diverse bunch taking part in this, in very different roles with very different levels of experience. So something that's a new idea to one person might be old hat to someone else. And that's okay, just bear with us. If there's one part that seems obvious to you, it might be new to somebody else. We reckon there'll be other bits you find new and different. 
So back to the shape of this training. We started by looking at the search for hidden leopards. Then we looked at the idea of the journey. After your breakout group, we'll start to look more closely at our church contacts. 